Hey guys, so um, the first section of this workout is going to be um, a combination of cardio intensive and core intensive. So what you're going to be doing is four movements. Uh, you're doing no push-up burpees, you're doing 20 reps of that, 30 air squats, 90 seconds of plank, and 30 lunges. I'm going to do today's workout uh, myself without any weights, so it's going to be very focused on speed. And when I'm doing a cardiovascular movement, it's gonna be focused on really pushing my edge in terms of how quickly I can execute the reps. And, and then just sort of trying to catch my breath and focus on bracing my core during the core movements. All right, in the no push-up burpee, you want to jump back into your plank, making sure that your hands are directly underneath your shoulders, not in front of. And you wanna make sure that your chest is between your hands and you are not dropping down into the push-up in a no push-up burpee. You're just jumping back into the plank, bringing your feet as close to your hands as you can. Big jump. Good job, Bella. Push back, jump in, and up. All right, air squats. In the air squat, you are focused because you're not loading up with weight. You're focusing on executing your squat and as quickly as possible coming up out of the bottom. So ideally you are dropping your butt to or below your knees and focusing on getting your hips forward. A lot of people focus on extending their legs, but instead focus on how quickly you can open your hips as a way of focusing on speed out of the bottom. What we wanna do in plank is gain the stability and strength in shoulders and core so that all the things that are based off of plank become easier. So in your plank, what you wanna focus on is making sure that your hands are directly under your shoulders, not in front of. And that also means that you wanna focus getting your body weight over your wrists rather than allowing your heels to drop and pushing your butt back like a down dog. So shoulders stacked over wrist, chest between thumbs, and then next, focusing on not allowing the winging of your scapula, instead pushing and separating the shoulder blades so that you're in a stable shoulder position. And then pelvis-wise, want to focus on not going into what's called anterior tilt, instead go into posterior tilt, where you roll your pubic bone towards your chin so that your lower back is flat. Okay, lunges, if you have knee pain or knee sensitivity, it's advisable that you don't front lunge because there is more pressure going forward into the knee and there's more likelihood of the knee going over the ankle. So if your knees are sensitive, you can step into reverse lunge, which focuses on the knee being directly in the middle of the foot. It's a lot more easy to control that when you're stepping back. Now, if you don't have knee issues, there is some benefit in terms of strength to going forward. So that would be like this trying to make sure that the back knee touches the ground or gets close to touching the ground. Again, anytime you're working on a movement without weight and you normally use weight, your focus should absolutely be on how fast you can execute the movement. All right guys, this next section is three movements that you're gonna be doing 40 seconds of work and 20 seconds of rest, and you're doing four rounds total. So it is toe taps, uh, so just quickly uh, moving from foot to foot like you're prancing, uh, hollow body hold, which is your core focus, and then jack squat jumps. So you're dropping into a wide uh, foot position, dropping into your squat, and then jumping up. So it looks like a jumping jack, except that you're squatting when your feet are wide. All right, so place an object in front of you. It doesn't matter what the object is, but just make sure that you're not putting any weight on it when you're doing your toe taps. You're gonna start your timer or use your uh, app that's gonna time your 40 seconds. You're gonna start with one foot on top of the object and you're gonna move as quickly as you can, just tapping but not putting any weight on the object. Act like the ground is hot and you wanna move your feet off the ground as quickly as possible. All right, next is hollow hold. Again, 40 seconds with 20 seconds off. You're gonna lean back, bring your arms up over your head, and go as far back as you can. See if you can elevate your feet off the ground and you're gonna hold this position. If this feels too intense, you can bring a knee in or you can bring both knees in. Another option is to bring your arms down but keep your legs extended.
Okay, especially if you have low back sensitivity, it's probably a better idea to drop your arms. <laughs> okay, so for jack squat jumps, you just want to think about doing a jumping jack, except that you're not using your arms. Your feet are going out and in, but now you're gonna drop into the squat, come out. Focus on getting out of the bottom really quickly and try not to land and then squat. It is all one quick movement. You're, as soon as your feet touch the ground, you're dropping into the squat. Okay guys, um, next section we're gonna do five movements. Again, still focusing on a combination of cardio and core work. And you're gonna be doing 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest. The first thing is ins and outs. So this kind of harkens back to like the days of field sports training where imagine that you have a ladder and you're going inside of one of the squares and outside of one of the squares at the highest speed you can. The next thing is gonna be side plank. You're gonna do 40 seconds on each side and then squat shuffle. So you're dropping into the squat and then shuffling. So you are taking up space. So you wanna have enough space that you can do that, but just enough space that you can squat and shuffle and go in both directions. Then you have scissor step up, so you need to have some kind of stable coffee table, box, um, chair, something that's gonna be able to handle your weight. And then you have bolt hold, similar to hollow hold, except instead of being in that really obtuse angle, now you're going to be in more of a compressed position. Sort of think about the top of your V up. Okay, so for ins and outs, you wanna imagine that you're going outside of the box, inside the box, one foot at a time. So start with your knees soft and your hips flexed and you're gonna stay in that low center of gravity as you move your feet quickly in and out of the imaginary box. All right, for side plank, you can either be on your hand or on your elbow. If your wrists are sensitive, you probably wanna to go to your elbow. Regardless of what's on the ground, palm or elbow, you wanna make sure that whatever is on the ground is directly under your shoulder. So make sure you're focused on that. And then try to keep the weight over the arm or the elbow and pushing actively against the ground so that you're not sinking your hips towards the ground. If you want to make this harder, you can also do a star version or even start moving the foot forward. All right, so for squat shuffle, you're going to drop into your squat and then you're going to take kind of a leap to the one side, squat on that side, leap back. So just going back and forth. So for the scissor step ups, you want to focus on trying to look like you're exchanging one leg for the other, but you'll want to make sure that your legs are fully extended when you're switching. So what I don't want to see is this, where your legs never become extended. Instead, focus on getting full extension before you do the switch up. like the top of a V-up position. You want to start by rocking back so that you're balancing on your rear end and then start to extend your legs just enough that your toes are above your knees. Your hands are down by your hips or by your quads and you just want to focus on maintaining the proximity of your quads to your chest the whole time. Try not to accidentally let your legs start to escape that compressed position. Chest open, spine extended. Okay, this section you're gonna need um, one dumbbell for dumbbell snatch, probably uh, heavier than what you're gonna be using for uh, your dumbbell thruster. So I have one 20 pound dumbbell and I'm using two 15s for the thrusters. This is the way it works. You're gonna be doing 21 reps of single arm dumbbell power snatch. So you're gonna do 11 on one side, 10 on the other. Then you're gonna do 21 burpee hop overs. So just place a dumbbell on the ground and you're hopping over that object. You can also one, two step it if you don't wanna jump with two feet. And then the last thing is dumbbell thruster. You're grabbing lighter weight than what you snatch with and you're doing 21. The second time you do this, you're doing it with 15 reps and the last time with nine reps. So for the dumbbell snatch, we're gonna do it from the ground. So each time the dumbbell needs to touch the ground, it's your choice whether you wanna alternate sides for every rep. I'm just gonna do fives. I'm 
until I get to uh, 20, and then I'll do one on the last one, because it's 21 for the first set. So dumbbell starts on the ground, hips are above your knees, bend your knees at the same time that you are bringing the arm overhead. Okay, so for burpee hop over, just place the object to one side of your body, drop all the way down so your chest touches the ground, and hop over. All right, dumbbell thrusters. You want to position the dumbbells over the top of your shoulders. You're going to drop into a full squat. squat and explode into the press. Try not to separate the squat from the press. So this is what I don't want you to do. Right? Instead, it is all one movement. All the way down, explode up. Use the power of your legs to lessen the effect on your shoulders. <laughs> 